Father, we come before your throne tonight. We come in the authority and in the power of the name of Jesus. And Father, we believe for a mighty, mighty move of your Holy Spirit. Father, we celebrate the birth of your Son this week as we go through this week into next weekend and we celebrate Christmas. We thank you, Father God, for sending your Son into this world, not only to die for our sins, but to give us life and that life abundant, that life free. Father God, I pray tonight that you would move by your Holy Spirit upon the hearts of those that are in the sanctuary and those that are watching through technology this evening, that God, their lives would be touched, encouraged, strengthened, and uplifted. And we give you glory for it in Jesus' mighty name. Before I get into my, the word tonight, I want to say thank you to Pastor Mike and Kathy for the privilege that I've had just only been a few years to be able to stand in this pulpit and preach the word of God and minister. And Pastor Mike, thank you so much for the honor of being able to do that. And I thank God tonight. Uh, I didn't call Kathy once in a while. I'll send a text and say, would you sing this certain song tonight. I didn't text her. I didn't tell her what I was preaching on. But my message tonight is, His name is. His name is. Have you ever thought about the name of Jesus? You know, as we were singing that song, His name is power. His name is healing. He gives us light in the darkness. But tonight, I want to look at different aspects of the name of Jesus. Who is he to you tonight? I ask you that question. Who is Christ to you this evening? Do we really know him? Do we really have an understanding of who Christ is and what he means to us? Friends, we live in an hour right now where we better know. We better know who Christ is. We better know him personally. Not just know about him, but know who he is to us and on our behalf that we can call upon that name. There's a lot of people that use the name of Jesus that have no understanding of who he is. I ask you this question tonight before I get into this fullness of this word. Are you living in the fullness of who Christ is in your personal life? I don't know about you, but I'm on a mission to know him in that fullness I'm finding more and more out about him each day. The scripture that I'm going to be ministering out of tonight is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Isaiah prophesied the birth of Jesus Christ 700 years before it actually happened. So if you've got a prophetic word tonight that's been given to you, and it hasn't come to pass, don't give up on it. It took 700 years for Christ to show up in this world. But you know, if you go through the Old Testament, over 300 times, I believe it is, that it was prophesied that a Savior would come. That's amazing. And He came at God's appointed time. We will always be learning more and more about who He is, no matter how long we live in this life. If I live another 28 years to be 100 years old, I'm still going to be learning who Christ is on my behalf. I thank God for the progress that I've made. I thank God for each one of you and the progress that you've made. But I don't want to leave this world. I want to know Him more. How about you? I want to know him more. Not just more about him, but more of him in my life. I want to experience who he is on my behalf and what that means to me. He's mentioned in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. He's the fullness of the Godhead who came into this world on a mission. And that mission, church, was you and I tonight. Even though we weren't born yet, God looked down through the years of time and knew that in 2021, on December the 19th, that you would be sitting in the sanctuary or you would be watching me online tonight. 
And God has your steps ordered. God has a plan for your life. But the more I learn about him, the more I want to know about him tonight. Let me read the scripture to you out of Isaiah chapter 9, beginning at verse 6, the prophecy of the coming of Jesus. It says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. To order and upon his throne of David and over his kingdom. Here, listen to this, because I'm going to speak about this in a couple of weeks. This very line here. To order it and to establish it with judgment and justice. I want to tell you something, church. Judgment and justice of the king of kings is going to come. And I'll share more about that another time. It's not the message for tonight. From that time forward, even forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. In this scripture, we find five different descriptive names of who Jesus is. But I want to look at some others here real quick. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the bread of life, the chief cornerstone, the deliverer, the everlasting one, the faithful and true, the good shepherd, the head of the church, I, the great I am, Emmanuel. We sing about Emmanuel. If you notice, I'm using the alphabet tonight. He's Jehovah. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. He's the Lamb of God and the Lion of Judah. He's Messiah and the miracle worker. He's the God of new birth, our hope and overcomer. He's a prophet and a priest. He's my redeemer tonight. He's my rewarder. He's the rock of all ages. He's the Savior of the world. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the undefeated king. He's the victorious one, the way maker, the exalted one, Yahweh, and the zeal of God. And church, I could go on and on with the names of who he is. He's not only Jesus, but he's all these other aspects to you and to me tonight. He's my all in all and my everything. He's more than enough for me. That's what I am finding in my life. That He is exceedingly abundantly more than I could ever expect or ask or think about or think for or ask Him for tonight. Friend, I'm telling you tonight, get to know who He is. Get to know the awesomeness of this God. You know, we've used God and we've used the story of Jesus more of a storyline and a fairy tale rather than a lifestyle. My life, listen to me, is built around Jesus Christ. I have no other God in my life. I have no other hope in my life but Him tonight. He is my all in all. He is my everything. He's rescued me. Not only saved me, but spared me and rescued me from death. He is eternal life tonight. He is my everything and my all in all. He's a friend, the Bible says, that sticks closer than a brother. And he's my Lord. Is he your Lord tonight? Is he really your Lord? The New Living Translation of Isaiah 9, it says, For a child is born to us, a son is given, the government will rest upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. I wanted to read that because there's different translations separate Wonderful and Counselor. But in the New Living Translation, it's all Wonderful Counselor. It's not Wonderful and Counselor. But I believe He is Wonderful. And He is Counselor tonight. And I want to look at these five descriptive names of God tonight. This is my Christmas message to you. His name is Wonderful. Isaiah 28. And a lot of my references tonight come from the book of Isaiah. It is amazing, church, when we really get into Scripture. In certain chapters... 
and books of the Bible talk about Christ in the Old Testament. And Isaiah was one of the main ones. Isaiah 28, 29 says, This also comes from the Lord of hosts, who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. Who do you look for to, to tonight, church? Who do you ask when you need counsel? Who do you ask when you need questions answered? Who do you run to? You know, I thank God for godly men and women that God has put in my life that have helped me through the hard places. But I can tell you when they weren't available, God was. The Lord was there that when I reached out to Him, I thank God tonight, church, listen to me. We serve a speaking God who not only speaks through His Word, but He speaks to you and I personally. I asked Pastor Mike to think about something. I said, would you consider you and I doing a tag team the first Sunday night in January? I've been praying. I know Pastor Mike said to me a couple weeks ago, he said, what are the prophets saying about 2022? And I, I really haven't been listening a lot to him. I've just been spending more time just worshiping God and things. And I began to pray and I said, Lord, I, I just ask you, give me a, a little insight of what 2022 is going to hold for us. And it's been amazing. Almost every morning for the last several mornings when I awake, I get awake at sometimes 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And many times as I awaken, God begins to put things in my heart and thoughts in my mind. And I've been writing them down. And I, I really feel like I want to share some of those things with you to give you encouragement. You know, if, if all you're doing is listening to what the world is saying and the media is saying, we, we sang about breaking heaviness and depression. You know, that's where these things lead to if you're listening to the world. And I don't want to get into that tonight. I could, I could, I could end up with a critical spirit tonight over some of the things that are going on that people are saying that's creating fear and doubt in the lives of people. But I thank God when I get a download from heaven, it's truth. It is truth right from the very throne room of God. But His name is wonderful. Matthew 21, verses 14 to 16. It says, Then the blind and the lame came to Him in the temple, and He healed them. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things He did... That's where he, we find the description of who he is. He's wonderful. He does wonderful things. And the children crying out in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David. They felt like they were being indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? They were worshiping Jesus. They were saying wonderful things. They were giving praise to the son of God in that hour. He gained a name wonderful by the things that he did for the hurting and the lowly. But he was despised by the rich and the religious of his day. We used to sing a beautiful chorus in the church. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty king, the master of everything. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He's the great shepherd. The rock of all ages, almighty God is he. Bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful, church, Jesus. There is no other tonight but him. There will never be another Savior. We don't need another Savior. Our Savior has come, and our Savior lives tonight. He's not only wonderful, but number two, he's counselor. In some translations of the Bible, again, I remind you that wonderful and counselor are combined. He is a wonderful counselor. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. We sang about it again tonight. I tell you, I love it when God confirms the word that he puts in your heart. But let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways. How many of you can say tonight that God has been teaching you His ways? You know, I didn't always know the ways of the Lord. I, in fact, I'll tell you, church, I'm still learning 
the ways of the Lord. I've got a pretty good perspective of that direction, but I'm learning more and more every day the ways of the Lord, of His desire for my life, His desire for where He wants me to be going and the things He wants me to do, be doing in this hour. And it says, go on in that verse there, and it says, and He will teach us His ways and we shall walk in His paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and a word of the Lord from Jerusalem. How many of you remember the story when I talk about counselor and counselor? How many of you remember the story in the Old Testament about Solomon when the two women, there was, they had babies on the same night and that, that very night one of the women's babies died and what that woman did was try to steal the other baby and he ended up before Solomon, the king. And the one lady says, this woman tried to steal my baby. And the king, through the wisdom and the counsel of God, he said, I will resolve this. I will take the baby. I will cut it in half and give each one of you half of the baby. And the one mother spoke up. The true mother says, please, please don't kill that baby. Give it to her. And the king says, give that lady the baby because that's his true mother. That's counsel, church. We need the counsel of God in this hour. We need the counsel of God and the decisions that we need to make in this hour. We've got a lot of things that are being placed before us. A lot of decisions to make. And I'm not here to tell you either way what to do tonight. You know, this thing with vaccines and all these other things, you better have the counsel and the wisdom of God to know what you should do. I'm not here to condemn anybody pro or con. I'm just saying there's a lot of choices that's going to be thrown into your court in the weeks and the months ahead, and you're going to have to make a choice. Am I going to serve God or am I going to serve man? I'm just telling you what I'm believing that the future holds in some ways, but I know who holds a future. I have an inkling, understanding of what God is about to do. And, and I, I don't say it as, as an oxymoron and a statement, but I'm telling you, church, the best days of the church are yet ahead of us, and they're not behind us. God is ready to do great things in the house of God for the people of God. And we don't need to fear man. We don't need to fear what man can do to us, for greater is he that is in you and I than he that is in the world tonight. James 1 5 says if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God who gives to all liberally without reproach and it will be given to him I believe we're living in a day when God we need God's counsel more than ever before and not to be quick in making critical decisions for our life wonderful counselor number three mighty God how many of you know he's a mighty God tonight I'm telling you, he is great in strength and his ability. He's a God that moves in supernatural strength. You know, uh, I could go to the gym and work out every day, I, I, but that's not me. I, I have problems enough just trying to do little exercises at home. But I've got a grandson. It's this, I call him a kid. He's 32 years old. He's six foot three and weighs about 230 or 40 pounds. He goes to the gym every day. And when you get around him, he's a police officer. And I guarantee you one thing. If he pulls you over and walks up to the car, you will say, yes, sir. His arms fill out his shirt and stuff. He's a big brawny dude. And I always told him, I said, Corey, you're my bodyguard. If I got a problem with somebody, let me introduce you to my bodyguard. But he's a mighty God. Our God is mighty tonight. He's strong. He wants to build you and I up in our faith in him. And in our strength and our ability that is in him. How mighty is he? Isaiah 9, 3 to 5. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest. As men rejoice, they divide the spoil. You have broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, and the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle, and the garments rolled in blood, will be used for the burning of fuel of fire. He's the God of the battle ranks tonight. He's a mighty God. He will fight. Listen to me, church. 
It's not that you don't have to fight, but He will fight your battles for you. Israel, when He gave Israel the promised land, they had to go in and fight. There was battles that they had to do. But I guarantee you, it was God that went before them. Even in times where they were totally outnumbered in the Bible. Look at Gideon with 300 men defeated uh, over 100,000 enemy troops. Because he listened to God. The mighty God was fighting on his behalf. It says in the Bible that the battle belongs to the Lord. I wonder how many of you tonight are fighting battles that you wouldn't have to fight if you gave them to God. There's battles that you're fighting tonight. Let me say this to you, and I feel this thing. If you're going to try and fight them in your own strength, you're going to weary yourself. And you're not going to win that battle. You may get a little bit of a victory, but you will never be an overcomer of those things that are working against you. We overcome, church, the Bible says, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Give the battle to the Lord. He is a mighty God tonight. He's mighty on your behalf. You know, being a pastor, I've had to help people fight battles. And there's a lot of battles I didn't want to get involved in. But I can tell you tonight that we serve a God that wants to get involved in every battle of your life. And every thing that is coming against you, He wants to give you victory over. He is a mighty God. I love what it says in Psalm 24. This is one of my, another of my favorite psalms in verses 7 to 10. It says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and lift up you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, He is the King of glory. Selah. Selah. Think about it. He is the King. He is the mighty King tonight. You know, sometimes we need to begin to tell our problems and our difficulties how big and how strong and how mighty our God is. Don't make your problems bigger than your God tonight. That's when we get in trouble. That's when we suffer defeat in our hearts and in our lives. Isaiah verses, chapter 11, verses 1 to 5. Again, this is a prophecy, a prophetic word about the coming of Jesus. It says in verse 1, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. These first two verses here can be a message all of its own about the spirit, seven spirits of God. And let me say as I read it, there's not seven Holy Spirits, but it's the seven aspects of the Spirit of God, of who He is and who He wants to be for you and be working and operating in you. God wants to give you the Spirit of God. He wants to give you the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, and the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He delights in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by the sight of His eye, nor decide by the hearing of His ears. But with righteousness He shall judge the poor and decide the equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. I'm going to tell you something. I could stop and pause right there and speak about those last couple lines there. We are about to see God do what that scripture says. Let me read it again. He shall strike the earth with his mouth. And with his breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. Friend, I'm telling you something. God is about to move. 
We are about to see a manifestation. I'm getting real prophetic right now. I really feel it. But we are about to see a manifestation of the power of God that's going to come upon this earth. And those that think they're high and mighty and going to take charge, I'm telling you, there's one greater than them that is about to assert His authority and power in the earth once again. And I'll leave it at that for another day. I love what it says in Matthew 28, 18 and 19. And it says, Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on the earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It speaks about His might. It speaks about the authority of Christ. And that authority He gave to those disciples and He was giving to you and I. That is a call to us as born again believers to go into all the world and make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe it's in the book of Luke chapter 9 where He gave them authority and power over all demonic spirits and over all sickness and disease. Why church? Why do we tolerate sickness and disease when He's given us authority over those things? Let's take that authority. Let's believe God to be what I shared with you earlier. He is our healer. The Bible says He sent His Word and healed our disease. I've been encouraging. I get phone calls almost every week from people that we've been friends with over the years. And a lot of them have fallen victim to this virus, this COVID and the flu bug and some of the other things that are going on. And you know, there, there was a day when I was prayer and care pastor. I was in the car and on the go and going there and praying over them, anointing them. And you know what I'm telling them when they call me now? Get your oil out. Get your oil out and anoint one another. If you're, you're a husband and your wife's sick, get the oil out. Well, guys, anoint her and pray over her. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Wives, if your husband's sick, lay hands on him, anoint him with oil. Now, be careful how you lay hands on him. I know some of you would like to use that to bring the heavy hand down. It's okay. Just don't hurt him anymore and he's already hurting, okay? But church, church, God's given us authority. He's given us power. Authority comes and then authority is power. We don't have power without authority. If you do, you're not going to accomplish anything. But we have to to be authorized. It's like a police officer. A police officer has been authorized to wear that badge, to carry that gun, and to enforce the law. Friend, you and I have been deputized by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to carry that authority into our earthly realm and into our life. Wonderful, counselor, mighty God. Number four, everlasting Father. He's the God who was and is and is to come. He always was, He'll always be. Isaiah 40, 11, it says, He will feed His flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with His arm and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those who are with young. Isaiah 63, 16, it says, Doubtless you are our father. Though Abraham was ignorant of us, and Israel does not acknowledge us, you, O Lord, are our father, our redeemer, from everlasting to everlasting. He is the everlasting father tonight to you and to me. How many of you recognize him as your father this evening? Isaiah 64, 8. Didn't I tell you a lot of these references about his name and who he is? It's found in Isaiah. Isaiah 64, 8 says, But now, O Lord, you are our father. We cry, we, we are the clay, you are the potter, and we are the work of your hands. How many of you tonight know you just didn't come from your father's loins from your mother's womb tonight but you're a creation of God God created you God sustains you Psalm 68 verses 5 and 6 it says a father to the fatherless a defender of widows is God in his holy habitation 
God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who are bound in prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. A father to the fatherless. We live in a generation and a day when the generation coming behind us is basically a fatherless, parentless generation. Because of the desire for people to gain the riches of this world, mom doesn't stay home to raise the kids. Everybody works and works overtime and sometimes two jobs to get the things of this world, to stay ahead of the Smiths and the Joneses. And if your name's Smith and Jones, forgive me tonight. But we've made material things our God. And we've lost our children. And I say, oh God, in this hour, help us as the church redeem this lost generation. Help us to reach out to those that are trying to find their identity tonight and be His hand extended and introduce them to the true Father, a Father who loves them, a Father who gave His best for them. You can look at the beginning of the Lord's Prayer when Jesus taught them to pray. He taught them to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. For how long? Forever and ever. His kingdom, church, listen to me, will never end. There's no monarchy that will ever overthrow my God and His kingdom. And you and I tonight can feel safe in His arms because He will keep us. He will overshadow us. That's what a father does. When I think of Him being my everlasting father, I think of David when David knew Him as his shepherd and father. Wonderful counselor, Mighty God, everlasting Father. And number five, He is the Prince of Peace. One of these days, church, there will be peace on earth. You know, when Jesus was born that night, as the angel of the Lord came over on that hillside to those shepherds, and He told them, do not be afraid. And as He shared with him about the birth of Jesus, it says that angel was joined by a multitude of heavenly hosts singing glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill to men. Friend, there will never be a treaty that man will draw up that will ever bring peace. The only peace that there will ever be on earth is when the peace giver himself brings peace. How many of you realize tonight that you are all called by God to be peacemakers? Peacemaker. We did a, a course when I was still at Bethel, and it was a course about being a priest, peacemaker when there was turmoil, when there was strife between individuals of how to try and deal with those. And we had a lot of success. There's a few we didn't, you know. You can't go against a person's will, but what we tried to do to the best of our ability is bring the peace of God, the presence of God into the circumstances of those lives. But there's coming a day on this earth. I love what it says in Isaiah chapter 11. I'm going to read the, the verses 6 to 10. I've read, read verses 1 to 5, but verses 6 to 10 it says, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion and the fatling together. A little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young ones shall lie together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play by, by the cobra's hole. And the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse who shall stand as a banner to his people. For the Gentiles shall seek him and his resting place shall be glorious. What a day that's going to be. 
I believe it's going to go back to the way it was in the Garden of Eden before sin came into the earth. That God one day, one day, I believe after the millennial reign, when God sets up His reign on this earth, that we're going to see peace like we've never seen peace before. Luke 2.14, uh, I, I shared it with you a while ago. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. Good will to men. We used to sing that beautiful old hymn, Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. That would be my prayer for you in this Christmas season. That the peace of God that passes all understanding would flood your hearts and lives. And you would get to know Him as who He is. As I get ready to conclude, and maybe Sister Kathy, we can sing Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper. Maybe as, as we, not right now, but when I conclude these final couple words here. But who is He to you tonight, church? Who do you want Him to be in your life? I want you to seriously think about that. What areas of life are you having difficulty in tonight? Because if I would have went on and shared more and more of the names of Jesus, several years ago, I, I used to write the devotionals, daily devotionals for the church in Littlestown. And for 15 months, seven days a week, I had descriptive names that were found in the Word of God of who He is. Whatever your problem is tonight, He will be the answer to that problem. If you need a deliverer, He will be your deliverer. If you need a healer, He will be your healer. If you need a provider, He will be your provider. Let me share these couple Jewish names for Him tonight. He's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who will provide. Paul said, He will supply all of my needs according to to His riches in glory. He is Jehovah Rapha. The Lord will heal. He is your healer tonight. There is no disease that God cannot heal tonight. Cancer is curable. COVID is curable. Heart disease, you name it, it's curable tonight. For my Bible says with God nothing is impossible. Can you believe that for your need tonight? Can you believe that He will do it for you? That's where we run into trouble. We can believe that God will do it for somebody else, but we can't believe God will do it for me. We can't believe God can deliver us from drugs and alcohol and the addictions that we find ourselves in. But He can and He will if you will believe Him and trust Him. He is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. He is our everything tonight. He will bring peace into your life where there's trouble and strife and turmoil tonight. He will calm. I used to sing a song. It was a southern gospel song. He will calm the troubled waters of your soul. He will cleanse your heart and make you whole. That's who He is tonight. He is Jehovah Shalom. He's more. Shalom, listen to me, is more than just peace tonight. It's everything of who God is and what He can do in your life. He is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. What does that mean, banner? Back in the Old Testament, every, there was 12 tribes, and every one of those tribes had a banner that identified who they were as a tribe. Friend, my identity and your identity. He is my banner tonight. My identity, your identity is in the Lord tonight. I do not get my identity by what I do. I get my identity of who I am in Christ tonight. You can call me pastor, but that's not my real identity. That's what I do for Him. I'm a born again, washed in the blood child of God. That's who I am tonight. That's who you are tonight. You've been saved. You've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb tonight. Jehovah Nisi, our banner. Jehovah Sidkenu. The Lord, our righteousness, He is my Redeemer tonight. He's my Jehovah Sid Canoe tonight. He's Jehovah Raha, the Lord, our shepherd. I love what David said. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And yo, yea, though I walk through the valley of COVID and death and sickness and disease and heartache, He is with me. And He brings me through it. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. We all have enemies tonight. Some of them are physical people and there's other enemies that have come against us. But in the midst of preparing that table before us in the presence of our enemies, He anointeth our head with oil until what? Our vessel, our capacity of Him, of His presence runs over. You know, when something runs over, it means it's full. It means it's full. God wants to bring you to a place of fullness tonight. Some of you are running on a half-empty tank. Or maybe it's half-full, whatever way you want to look at it. But God wants your tank to be full of the power of the Holy Spirit, of His presence tonight. God wants to fill you until you... I, I, I don't know if you've been to one of these places, but I have had times when God blessed me so much that I thought if He did one more thing, I was going to explode. I, I felt that inner fullness inside of me. I felt the energy and the power of God. Friend, His power is accessible to you and to me. We can know Him. We can know Him tonight. And the power of His presence, the power of His resurrection, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that dwells in you and I tonight. And we can live in that. Listen, it's not an experience that you have once in a while. It's not an experience that you only have on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night or a midweek service in the church. It is an anointing and a power that you can have seven days a week, 24 hours a day. I thank God I can wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I can feel that anointing and power in my life. I can feel that power in the middle of the afternoon when it seems like everything around me is falling apart and nothing wants to go right. His power is available to you and to me tonight. He is Jehovah Raha, my shepherd. And finally, he's Jehovah Shama. The Lord is always present. The Lord is always, say that with me, the Lord is always present regardless church of where you are regardless of what you're going through god did not abandon you god did not forsake you his word says lo i am with you always even unto the ends of the earth listen to me there are some things a lot of things that we have to learn to go through and until you learn them you're going to keep going through them. Life is a challenge. Life is a classroom. We're learning step by step, day by day, class by class. The ways of the Lord. And friend, I love it when I learn the ways of the Lord so I do not have to go back and relearn it again. I don't want to be like Israel and have to keep going around the same mountain for 40 years until we get it right. Let's get it right. Let's get it right. Come on. Let's get it right in our life. There's a lot more names I could share with you. But whatever you need in your life, He is for you and for me. In this Christmas season, I would ask you tonight to make a fresh rededication of your life to the Lord. You that are watching online, I say it to you. Maybe you're going through the big, biggest struggle and the biggest battle of your life. You want to get victory over it? Dedicate your life to the Lord afresh and anew. Maybe you're sitting here tonight and maybe one day you serve God faithfully. Maybe He was your everything and your all, but for some reason, things begin to happen in your life and you took another pathway. But the problem of it is that pathway led you away from Him. You said, I'm going to do it my way. 
It's an old Frank Sinatra song. I think it is. I did it my way. But friend, you know what I found was in my life when I tried to do it my way, it didn't work. But the only time it works is when we do it His way. Allow Him to be Lord of all of your life and not part of it. Give Him your everything because He gave you His everything when He died on that cross. He is the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper. He is the light in the darkness. He's working when you can't see Him working. He's working, church, when you can't feel Him working. Man, I feel an anointing on that tonight. We go so much by what we see and what we feel. And a lot of times we miss the purpose and the plan of God because we're looking for Him in all the wrong places. You know where you're going to find Him tonight? You're going to find Him on your knees in prayer. You're going to find Him when you come to a place where you give Him, him your all. And we say, Lord, I'm sick and tired of trying to do it my way. Because it sure isn't working. But He is a way maker. And He'll make a way for you. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, I thank You tonight. God, You're so much more than what we've already experienced. You're so much more than I could preach about in 45 minutes tonight. Lord, we could spend days here talking about who You are. We could spend days talking about what You're capable of doing in our hearts and lives. But God, we don't want to talk about it. God, we want to experience You. We want to experience Your anointing, the power of Your presence tonight. And right now, Holy Spirit, move through this congregation. Move upon those that are watching by technology tonight, God. Visit them in their living room, in their bedroom, wherever they are. Wherever they're watching at tonight, Holy Spirit, apprehend them. Holy Spirit, arrest them. And let them know that you're there for them. God, let them know the true love of a true father, God, tonight. That God, you're the God that mends broken hearts. You're the God that raises up hope that was lost tonight. You're the God that redeems time in our life when we thought it was over and we would never get an opportunity again. You're the God of second chances tonight, Father God. Lord, touch tonight. Touch tonight and heal and restore and deliver and redeem tonight and do a mighty new work in the hearts of your people. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Would you?